Hey everybody, I just wanted to do a new tutorial and this time I wanted to show the new masking tool in Photoshop. I'm not sure how new it is, but I haven't really used it much and we're going to use this picture of my girlfriend here. She has her own channel as well, uh, Glam and Gaming with no underscores. Okay, so first off, let's unlock this layer. So it's just a regular image, it's locked. So we're gonna double click that and just hit okay. You could name that if you wanted. And now we're gonna make a new layer and we're gonna drag it behind it. And I'm gonna color pick. I'm gonna go hit B, just get brush out. And I'm actually gonna hit G to get the uh, paint bucket out or to select off right here on the side. I'm gonna color pick get kind of this purple color, maybe right here, a little peachy purple color, kind of pink. Just a little bit with my color sliders over here, and I'm just gonna fill the background. So if you look at this layer, it's just pink behind it. So now I'll go back and select the image that you're trying to remove the background from. And I'm hitting W, which will go to one of these, these masking tools right here, or selection tools, basically. And I just want to, any of them will work. We just want this right here where it says select and mask to show up. Okay, now that I've hit that, it everything disappeared. So what we need is to use this first tool. It's called the quick selection tool. If you hit W, it'll go right to that. And brush size is somewhat relevant in this. <laughs> and so based on the size, it'll start adding wherever I brush into. See how it's just like adding more of the photo. And I'm not too worried about this. This is just a first quick pass. But you can also subtract if you hit Alt or if you adjust it up here on the top. You can see a little plus and minus. I just leave it on the plus. And if you hit Alt, this is going to bounce between those two. And I'm going to Alt this area out. And I'm just clicking and holding. And that's the left click. Or in my case, I'm using a stylus. So I'm just pressing down with the uh, stylus to tool. Okay, and you see here it's a little weird just because it's kind of like fuzz and whatnot. It's not really understanding what we're doing, but that's okay. We can we can adjust things as we go. So we're gonna zoom in a little bit, which you can use the zoom tool over here on the side, but I'm just gonna hit Z and kind of zoom in a bit. I'm gonna go back to this basic tool here, the top one, W, and it's getting a little bit rough, but we're going to change the brush size using the bracket tools or the bracket uh, on your keyboard, little bracket keys. Or you can go up here where it says size and adjust it too and slide it. I just like the brackets because you can easily kind of see where you're going with it. It's adding and we're going to subtract. And I kind of want to add in right here just to see. See, I missed the collar or the edge of the coat there a little bit. I add that back in and then go back across and remove. But I'm using a smaller brush size, so it's a little more accurate. And it's kind of just grabbing along those edges. Once you have kind of the bulk of the work done, you can go to the Refine tool, which is the next one down here. And with that one, we're gonna zoom in a little bit more. And this can just be used just to kind of clean up the edge a little bit. Oh, I accidentally selected one below. So the refine tool can go ahead and kind of be used just to go along this edge. See how it's a little bit messed up there? And I'm just using the plus side of this right now. Like the eyelashes, you can get a little bit back in there. Just clean it up a little bit. Just going to go along these problem areas. So this is a little bit weird here. Let's try a bigger brush and see if that... So it's starting to fill it back in. But if it's, if it's giving you issues like this, you can just go to the tool right in the bottom. And we can just literally paint it back in. And this works best if you do have a stylus. And I'm going to put my glove on here for a second. Okay, so now we can just paint these edges in. And it's still on the plus, notice that. And if you look down here, it's getting a little bit weird here. And we're just going to, we're kind of just going to make up this shape here. It looks like our arm kind of comes out. We could actually paint a little too far if we want. And since these areas are so dark down here, it's not really understanding what to cut in and what to cut, what to cut out. So you kind of just have to make that up yourself here. This would have just been better with like a, you know, maybe a 
cleaner take, better lit photo or something like that. I'm just going to paint that out really quick. And obviously a bigger brush would work. Sometimes I like just using the smaller brush just to not to change the brush as much. And I'm holding Alt right now, so that's tracting areas. We're going to slide over here, and you'll notice we have the same issue over here. Not as much. So we're just going to go through here, find kind of where the edge was, and just adding it in with the plus button. I'll do that really quick with Control Z. So I can see the edge here, and I'm just going to follow this. This is kind of more of the retro way of doing it, but it got so much of it done just with that quick mask. And here you're going to notice we have the big issue of this fur, and I'm going to do that by hand as well. I just got to quickly cut it out. And you could refine these edges as much as you want to. Uh, what I do with situations like this, where it's kind of up against the edge, I'll just go past and then add back in like that. So now we get that nice little corner. There we go. And you don't have to do it all within this tool. You can kind of jump back and do some masking outside of the tool as well, or outside of the mask selection. So we're going to do, we've got most of it done there. We're just going to hit OK. And now almost all the backgrounds removed. We just have a few spots here. So we're just going to jump in here, make sure the mask is selected, not this side, but the right side. And if your colors, say you had like some color select or something, that's going to mess it up a little bit. So just hit, hit D. And now you got your white adds and hey can it X to jump back and forth and black will remove. And now you're, I'm just using a, just a pretty basic brush here. Let's do this as this is square one. And I just want to use the black to kind of get rid of this bit here. And yeah, there it's all cut out. Uh, down here are some edges that are a little bit weird and everything, but that's fine. Let's uh, let's just do a little color correcting to this just to get it so it looks like it fits this kind of pink purple color. I'm going to make a new layer above this and I'm holding alt to tag it down onto it. You don't have to do this step. It's fine if you don't, but it works. So we're going to go to, let's try hue first. And we're going to just zoom over here and I'm going to grab a softer brush. Big soft one in here. Make it a little bit smaller. Grab the pink color in the background. And you may have to go and select a color like this if your eyedropper isn't selecting from all layers. And I'm holding Alt to eyedrop. And with hue selected, see how I selected the hue layer up here? I'm just going to kind of paint in some of these purples a little bit. Just so it looks like this picture was taken in the same lighting as everything else. Just kind of grabbing. You see where the yellow light's kind of bouncing? And you could do, you can do as much or as little of this as you want to do for your photo. And you'll notice if it's on hue, but if I go to color, that's what we're gonna get instead. But hue, kind of picking out just those little bits of hues that are sticking out. It's not altering everything. It does alter, like if I go across the fingernails, it'll alter that a little too much. But I could do maybe like just a little bit of that in the hand. Make them a little bit more like they're actually in this environment. Maybe that's a little too much. But you can just kind of go through a little here and there. Then go and erase off the nails so they stay that nice orange color. Let's see here. Maybe, maybe a little bit on the, the moon here. And you could you could color correct a few things if you want, like if you want the ears to be a little more purple or something like that. But yeah. There you go. And now that we have that cut out, let's go ahead and put something behind it. And I'm actually just gonna grab, I, I looked up a purple nebula. I'm gonna throw that behind here. And there we go. And if we wanna make it more pink, we're just gonna do like, a, maybe let's do normal. Yeah, here we go, normal. And put the fill down a little bit. Now, let's take this and make like a YouTube thumbnail out of this. This is actually the original purpose of this. So we're going to do a new, new document. And let's do 1920 by 1080. And the DPI and stuff is not going to matter. If I put 300, it's still going to be the same size. 
or we could just do 16 by 9. There we go. And now a great way to get all this information over to that file is we're going to select it all by holding shift. I click the bottom one and then the top one and then control G to put in a layer or in a group. I'll title this image and background. And now I'm going to go up to these four lines here and go duplicate group. And now right now, Megan 2 is the current image. Let's put it onto Untitled 1. Hit OK. And now it'll duplicate all that stuff over to this, this doc right here. So we could go like here, just kind of move the whole group around. And you'll notice that the coloring is being a little bit weird because I don't have this pink purple color here it in across the whole background. So we're going to select that, hit Control T, and it's stretched across like that. Let's turn that off really quick just for a second, or maybe turn it up a little bit, pick some more colors, make it a little bit more close to what we're working with here. And sometimes we'll go in here and just try some different some different color mix modes, see if any of them work a little bit better than what I was using. Like hard light actually looks pretty cool, and you can compare them normal to hard light. Yeah, hard light actually looks really cool. We can move that around however we want. Looks like the light's coming from like over there a little bit, so and we could even spin this. I'm holding shift and just rotating around. That looks pretty cool. Let's see what it looks like in the beginning. Kind of like it was a light kind of just projecting right behind her like that. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and merge these down. Actually, let's not merge them and lose them. Let's Hold shift, grab both, and then drag them down to duplicate them. And while these two are selected, hit control E, and that will merge these down. And we want to make her kind of the focal point, so let's do a blur, a little bit of a Gaussian blur on here. Maybe like about two, whatever looks best to you. And if we turn this on and off, we can kind of see a little bit of the blur effect happening there. And now we have that. Let's make this, let's give it a title. And we're going to do minimize this up here, make a new group, control G, and it's going to be text. I hit T, and we're going to be, make it type out tutorial. I control enter. And control T and I'm jumping up and I'm scaling this up to the size I want it to be. Text can be a little bit finicky sometimes. It like runs a little slower sometimes here and there. So I'm gonna do maybe we'll do a tutorial like that and we'll have duplicate that text over again. Uh, and the way I did that, I just had this layer selected and I'm holding shift to keep it lined up like this, and then alt and it'll duplicate it as you drag it over. And the tutorial is going to be masking for thumbnails. And we're going to select all that, control A, and I'll make it white. And that's kind of standing out, but not as much as I want it to. I want it to stick out a little bit more. So we're going to go back into the image layer, make a new layer, and then set that to multiply and hit G to go to the paint bucket, but we don't want the paint bucket, we want the gradient tool. So hit shift G or just click and go here to gradient tool. And you can hit shift G to cycle through these easily. That's usually how I navigate. And we want the second one, which has the transparency. And I grab like a purple or bluish color here and just drag it up from the bottom and make a little bit of a gradient there. And you could drag it a little higher if you want. And then if it's a little too strong, you can kind of lower it down a little bit. But see, I just need a little bit to help those letters stick out. And there we go. So that's that's that for making a quick tutorial. And you could keep doing more effects on this if you wanted. If you want to soften things or something like that, you could grab like 
let's say we'll take this, see these color layer right here. We're just going to merge that down. I'm going to grab Megan's layer and drag it down to a new layer while holding it, and it'll duplicate it. And I'm going to do just a little bit of a blur on this, really soft like that. And then you could tone this down just a little, and then if you wanted, you can mask out different areas or something if you want to make it like a little sharper in the eyes or something like that. But just a little bit of softness looks makes skin look a little softer and everything. But yeah, there you go. There's how you make a quick thumbnail for your YouTube videos or just also how to do masking. So kind of a two-in-one tutorial. Um, you can once again you can check out her channel at Glam and Gaming. And she does streaming and makeup tutorials, and she streams lots of video games, all sorts. And you can also subscribe to my channel if you'd like. And mine's just like Tim Kaminsky, and you can find me at, at Random Spirits on like Instagram and Twitter. And yeah, subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Leave some comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And yeah, take care and have a great day or evening or whatever it is out there. Bye.